Today here we are with Dr. Steve Safier. He is with the Hay Group and you are the Senior Business Solutions Advisor to Hay Group. Can you tell us a little bit about Hay Group? What does Hay Group do and your role in the organization? Sure. We're a global consulting firm and uh, we're management consultants, but our specialty is we deal with the people issues in business. So as you know, all businesses run by the strength of their people. What we do is we help businesses manage, lead their people, inspire them, measure their performance, reward them, so that uh, they can produce the absolutely best results. My particular focus is in financial services. Hmm. Dr. Xavier, you are an expert at helping organizations and also helping people succeed at these uh, top level, uh, top notch organizations. You work closely with the board of directors and top level executives, uh, teams on a day to day basis to resolve business challenges in the highly competitive sectors. Uh, what has been the biggest business challenge in 2011? And also going forward, what do you expect, what do you foresee to be the business biggest ch business challenge in 2012? Sure, I, I think the answer is going to be the same. It's been the uncertainty. Mm. People just don't know, none of us really knows, where the economy is going, where the labor market is going, where business results are going, where the stock market is going. And although there are some positive signs, 2012 still looks unclear. And I think that's the type of uncertainty that businesses have to manage within. Hmm. Um, as we said earlier, as you mentioned earlier, you deal with the top companies in the highly competitive sectors and banks are amongst them. They are one of the actually most troubled we can say. Can we say that? And also the... Well, let's say complex compa and challenging. Complex and challenging. Yeah. They are criticized for being too big. Yet the customers demand bigger, more global, better banks. Um, looking at that, where do you see the future of banking and taking also the current developments into consideration? You know, it's a good question. Like in most of life, the challenge is often the opportunity, and the opportunity is the challenge. So for banking, having a large organization and being able to deliver multiple products and services to consumers and to businesses is a strength. But on the other hand, it also makes it very complicated, and now in the regulatory environment, uh, complicated more. So how do we manage the products and services, the offerings that the institution provides, and at the same time make each customer, whether it's an end user customer like you and me, or a business like Bloomberg, how do we make the customers feel valued and um, promote their business? Mm -hmm. And how do we do it? <sighs> Again, uh, it's, you ask good questions. Each person, each business has to feel like the bank or the financial services institution or uh, even the car dealer for that matter understands their particular needs and in order to do that we need employees who are motivated we need leaders who give the employees the latitude to be able to understand customer needs to be able to make decisions we call that empowerment mm -hmm. to be able to work with each other and even working with each other is getting more complicated as banks and other businesses become more global and uh, become more complex Working together with someone in your country, with someone who is managing a different service line, with someone who may be from a different function, say he or she is from finance and you're in technology, how those people work together to understand and service the customers, that's the internal challenge that banks are uh, wrestling with now. Hmm, talking about banks, let's continue with them. You lead the financial services industry consulting not only in the United States, but globally. And no, actually, my, my focus is in the U.S. The U.S. is big enough, and we feel that if we can focus on the U.S., although we certainly have many global clients, but understand working with my partners around the world to uh, bring solutions to global banks, I'm the point person for the U.S. But you did have Turkish banks that you dealt with. We deal with Turkish banks all the time. That's my... where I was going to come. <clears throat> How do you view the Turkish banking sector? The Turkish banking sector relatively is, is doing very well. It's, it's strong the, and there's good potential there. What we're finding is in Turkey as in the rest of the world, the leadership challenges and the focus on leadership, the kinds of people issues that I talked before are becoming even more important and the banks that are concentrating on those leadership challenges mm -hmm. are the ones that are producing the, uh, the greater results, even sometimes with fewer people. They have greater potential, you said, in terms of the Turkish banks. What kind of potential? Yeah, I don't mean so much now from a macro or mm -hmm. a, a geographic economic environment. I mean more in the priority that's being placed on the issues of motivation and management. Hmm. I think what I understand, or I do understand from my colleagues in Turkey, is that at the topmost tiers of the financial services industry, the banks there in Turkey are understanding that if we can put some emphasis on some of the softer, intangible things of um, how to manage people, that we can drive better results. We see that here, we see that around the world. We have um, 
probably over 40 to 50 years of research demonstrating that. All around the world, let's look at all, all around the world. What about the size of the banks around the world? Is it a help or is it a hindrance? Uh, it depends on how well the bank is run. Uh, for many banks, it's, it's a help. There are very strong global banks who have um, a franchise or a foothold in many countries. And to the extent that they work together, because their customers are themselves globals on the business level and sometimes, say, in, in the private wealth area, if they can work together across geographies and across functions, they can deliver better service and better value to their customers. And that's a message that we keep driving again and again, and we're hearing from our customers. That's that working together across the, the term in the corporate world is the, ma the matrix organization. Mm -hmm. Like in life, we all have different kinds of bosses almost at the same time, mm -hmm. and we have competing objectives. For example, we have our businesses, we have our friends, we have our family. At work, we have our US boss, and we have our global boss, and we have our finance boss, and we have our private banking or retail banking boss. We all need, and we have our colleagues. Mm -hmm. The way to work together and to solve some of the challenges that exist across those lines of business or geography, the banks that get that right are the ones that are really going to outpace the competition this year. What about the criticism that they get for what is seen as the excessive comp compensation? Too much money, sure. We, we hear that all the time. But you know, one of the factors in compensation is, it relates to the point I just spoke about. It's the complexity of the organization. The more complex the job, the more mm -hmm. complicated the job, the higher the compensation. If in fact banks start to split up and reduce mm -hmm. and become uh, more focused, we might see compensation go down. But the banking jobs have gotten tougher and tougher. There's also an issue of supply and demand. Like Wall Street cutting down to 100,000 people in past years. Yeah, Wall Street is cutting jobs, but if anything, uh, the financial services environment is getting more difficult. So for the people who have jobs, the compensation uh, being excessive, uh, not all the time, uh, certainly not. Um, if you have a job, mm -hmm. and if your job is challenged, and if there are few, only a few people relatively who can do your job, so basic supply and demand and economics, we'll see compensation continue to, uh, to hold and, and at some point maybe even to rise depending on where the regulators go. Last question, what's the payback for the organization? Ah, so here's where the research comes in. Organizations that focus on leadership, focus on creating what we call a climate, a, a way of working within the organization, much like you have here, even a culture. Organizations that focus on those kinds of things produce better results. Uh, superior performance, probably worth two to three times more than average performance. In the right climate, you'll get probably 45%, not probably, there's research here with Harvard, 45% mm -hmm. of the discretionary performance that people give mm -hmm. can be related to these intangible assets. I mean, we see this in all walks of life. We see this in sports teams. We see this in schools. We see this in, uh, in business, of course, and in banks. If you focus on those kinds of people issues, you're going to produce better economic results. And that's really, at the end of the day, what it's about. Thank you so much for your valuable insight and these valuable comments. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.